Without further ado, please help me welcome tonight Mario Murillo. Mario, how well, you doing tonight? Brother, this is an honor for me. I'm telling you, I feel the fire of God all over you. And uh, I feel like I'm carrying fire to a volcano tonight. Come on. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is amazing. And I remember the Tuesday nights we would do at the Awakening 209. Uh, and I always felt the glory of God. I feel it in the studio right now. And I don't know, folks, I got to tell you something about Isaiah. And that is that this show is doing amazing things. It's, it's remarkable what's happening through this, this uh, podcast, whatever we want to call this. It, it, to me, it's, a, it's an absolute weapon in the hand of God is what it is. The top social media expert in America is a guy that I got to know. I'm not, I'm not going to give you his name unless he gives me permission someday soon. They'll try to steal him. Yeah, but his initials are Steve Brown. <laughs> anyway, uh, he called you because he wanted to know what you were doing. Yeah. He, he, here's a guy that is working with the absolute elite of the Christian movement that called Isaiah and said, what in the world are you doing? Because of the impact that this program is having. And the way you're doing it, not only in the technology, because I learned a lot of technology just in the last 10 minutes here. And you're not going to believe what happened to me tonight, by the way. I'm on a, a show every week called Flashpoint. In fact, some folks have, are coming over from watching that and are now joining us over here. Awesome. And guess what? The show ended at uh, 6 o'clock. And then... I'm sitting there in the studio and they're going, tonight we're going an extra half hour live on Facebook. And I'm, I'm starting to have a cow because I'm thinking, I got to be on with Isaiah. I've got no way to tell him. But fortunately, you've always got bullets in your machine gun. Yes, sir. Man, always do. But I just want to tell you, I'm excited about being here. And I believe God is going to do some special healing miracles. And I wanted to talk about miracles, but I, I want you to yeah. give it back to you for a second. Yeah. So, Mario, I want to say I'm so honored to have you. I'm speaking on behalf of me and Nino. And by the way, Mario, I know you're seeing me on a camera over here, but on the actual stream, I'm staring directly at you face to face. I'm just you're on a third camera here. <laughs> but I just want to say for me and Nino, you know, Mario, I don't I know a lot of people that are new to the stream. They've been following us. Our thing's been growing in the last few months. They don't know when I posted you were going to be on. They said, how do you know, Mario Merlo? I've been waiting for you guys to connect for years. And they don't know that we've actually been connected for uh, going on. 10 years now yeah. uh, me and mario have been connected when the revival broke out of my living room we called mario we said what in the world is going on we don't know what to do people are getting healed revival's breaking out and you know mario has obviously a high demand people inviting him calling him to be everywhere but mario took the time when we first moved into that first building came out and i know mario you saw it was just packed out with young people wow. ex-gang yes. members ex-partiers and mario was one of actually i think mario was the first guest speaker we ever brought out to the revival i want to say when we moved in that new building you were one of the first ones that did our one of our first services and from that moment on he came and preached for us two to three times a year for the next seven or eight years and has been with us right. i actually came and did his anniversary i remember mario at your anniversary service it was perry stone bill johnson sean smith and me and i remember in the green room i said how in the world did i get here i don't know how i got invited to this but it was so awesome i i was it your 50 year anniversary of ministry or 40 years yeah 50 50, 50 years. in texas and what a powerful time and so i want to say mario as we're beginning this, I'm so honored that you're on here. You're a legend. You're a general. You know, you've been a huge impact in my life. And if you guys don't know, my pastor, who's Nino, who's watching right now, he actually got filled with the Holy Spirit in the 80s in a Mario Murillo crusade. So think about how crazy this is. He gets filled with the Holy Spirit in a Mario Murillo crusade in the 80s. Now, fast forward, we're bringing Mario into our revival, and this is all just connected. And I'm a result of Nino getting filled with the Holy Spirit in the 80s and now all the way we're here and now it's been awesome i was telling you mario god has been reaching right now we have over 2000 now we have 800 on youtube and That's 1400 amazing. on facebook so we have over 2000 live and you know god is growing this right now but one thing mario i wanted to say was god is raising up an army of misfits god is raising up i'm getting yeah. about 250 messages every day and a lot of these messages are people that say isaiah last week i was doing drugs last week i was at the bar last week i was doing this several celebrities have 
have gotten saved, gotten delivered, gotten breakthrough. And these people are finding it through YouTube. I had one girl, Mario, I, I wanted to tell you, she was about to commit suicide on her balcony. And she said that she was going to take her life. She had had the spirit of suicide for weeks attacking her. She didn't know what to do. She was trying to get deliverance. No churches were doing deliverance. And she said she was on her balcony and something told her, to go get on your phone and jump on YouTube. And so she's literally said, this is what she told me. She said, I was on the balcony, about to take my life. I jump on, grab my phone. Some voice kept telling me to get on YouTube. I click on the YouTube app. And the first video that pops up is you and this other guy, a friend of mine, TJ. And I click the video and the video is playing. And you guys begin to talk about breaking the spirit of suicide. And she said, I started feeling that spirit leave me. I started feeling breakthrough. I started feeling deliverance. And weeks had gone by and she messaged me saying, I no longer want to take my life. And so guys, I'm telling you this to stir up faith. This is what God is doing I know he's doing with you, Mario. Your stuff has been going viral, but God really, there. this year, I know everyone's saying, oh, the pandemic, it's so bad for the church. I believe this is the greatest year the church has ever seen because God is going viral. God is invading living rooms. God is invading cell phones. God is, the move of God is breaking outside. I love the, the revival. I'm preaching this weekend in a mega church. There's going to be, you know, thousands of people are going to see revival, but I'm telling you, I believe there is a social media revival breaking out, healing revival breaking out, almost like what we saw in the 80s and 90s. 90s, but now it's breaking out online. It's breaking out through the cell phone. And so I just really am seeing this. I know you're seeing it. I would love for you to share some of the stuff yeah. you're seeing, even some of the tent revivals you guys have been having. It's just been awesome to see the move of God. What we need to look at, Isaiah, is this. There's a parable of Jesus that explains your audience. All of you that are out there that just days ago may have been on drugs, may have been a a high priest in the church of Satan, and now you're filled with God, praying in the spirit, walking in the spirit. And, and here's this parable. It said that a man wanted to bring in the harvest because that's what you all are going to do. You're going to bring in the harvest. So the Bible says that the man went out in the morning and he hired people. Then he went out a second time, hired people. Then the Bible says he went out in the 11th hour and hired the last group right mm. before the end which is where I believe we are, Isaiah. We're near the end. So think about it. Here's the part about it. The people that were hired in the last hour were paid the same amount of money wow. as those who had worked all day. Oh, come on. Now, there's only one conceivable explanation for that. They produced as much in one hour wow. as the others did all day. And why is that? Because you see, God's going to use your hurt. He's going to use your desperation. He's going to use the days that you lived on the streets, the day that, that you may have sold your body or worshiped the devil or, or put a needle in your arm and had no way to survive. And today you have no explanation for your existence except that God in a moment absolutely intervened in your tragedy and changed you. But here's what I want to do as a, if, I, if I could be a little bit of a general for yes. a second. I want to give you all that are watching permission for your own revival. And what do I mean by that? Well, I was in the Jesus movement. I saw radicals born again on the Berkeley campus. I was in the most radical leftist communistic campus for 10 years. And I was there and I can't tell you the miracles I saw, the people that were saved, saved out of things that were unimaginable. Well, here's what I know. I know that God is doing it again, and I'm going to identify you as that group, that 11th hour group. That no, and, and here's what makes you so dangerous. Here's why the devil is having heart palpitations over this broadcast that we're doing, because you know what you're saved from. You know what you're saved from. You know, we, we do a tent crusade in inner city action of Frank Saldana. What a man of God. Awesome, you know him. What awesome. an awesome man of God. And we love him. Well, his worship team is the best worship team we ever used. And I'm going to give him the big head now, and I'm going to have to live with it. And I'm going to ask Frank to bring him back down to earth. But we, we've we had some of the big names of come Christian on, worship come to our tent crusade, right? And, and it falls flat. Come then ICA's on. team gets up on the stage and begins singing, and the glory of God falls. And again, I'm going to make, mention Steve Brown. I'm I'm doing more dream name dropping than a Hollywood agent <laughs> right now. Well, Steve Brown turns to me and goes, "Who is that worship team?" And I said, "That's the worship team from ICA Inner City Action." 
And he said, man, they've got more anointing than anybody mm. else that I know that are doing these concerts. And again, if they're watching, don't you dare get the big hit. <laughs> but I looked at him and I said, they know what they've been saved from. There is nobody that will sing like somebody that knows mm. what they have, that, that I've been saved from something. Jesus walked in the room and the Bible says the others sat there. But the, the woman who was delivered of seven devils knelt down, took an alabaster box with one year's salary. Think about what somebody might wow. be paid in one year. And all that ointment was poured on Jesus and on his feet. And the Bible says he explained why. Because she has sinned much. She loves much. The misfit, the forgotten, the people, nobody else. The devil is saying some of my prize trophies of hell are now preaching against me and taking lives away from me in a record level. Man, I'm getting filled with the fire of God right up, now. Come on. And, and here's, the, here's the thing I want to talk about is in the book of Samuel, chapter 1, chapter 1, uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 10, starting at verse 6, the Bible talked about a Saul who would, didn't want to be king, didn't feel qualified, and of course his life ended terribly, but let's examine this episode because it's valid. In it, Saul is chosen for a great task. People are watching right now. Mm -hmm. You've been chosen for a great task. Think about it. You've been chosen. And so he says, how am I going to do this? How are we going to change this evil world? How are we going to bring in the harvest? How are we in a, in a, a, a time of such misery, addiction, mm -hmm. violence, hatred, and division? How are we going to bring in the harvest? Here's what the prophet said to Saul. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you'll be turned into another man. Wow. And said, the next part said, let it be. There are things that we have got to allow tonight. Look come at on, me. Mario. You have got to allow the call of God on your life. Forget about what the church thinks. Forget about come what on. the religious crowd thinks. You're unique. You're powerful. You're anointed. You've got something on you. Nobody can explain you. You're a weapon in the hand of God. You are the devil's worst nightmare. Come on. Something's wrong with me. I'm getting here with come Isaiah, on. and come all of a sudden, I'm, I'm starting to go crazy. I'm trying to control come myself. On. But the fact is, you have come into the kingdom of God to make a noise that the church isn't used to, a sound that only hell recognizes. That's the sound of the redeemed. And it says, let it be that when this, these signs come to you, that you do as the occasion demands. You know what I hear people all the time? They're saying, Lord, tell me what to do. Lord, speak to me and show me what I come should on. do. There's a deeper revelation than that. Listen to what that verse says. As the occasion demands. There have always been, Isaiah, in the kingdom of God, people who recognize what needed to happen. They didn't go to God and say, can I please have some money to build a little church? They said, you know what needs to happen. Do you know that Amy Semple McPherson walked into Los Angeles in the 20s, a woman who built a church during the Depression, and 15% of the entire L.A. Basin went to her church. And she said, here's what needs to be done. We need to build a temple. We need to build Angeles Temple. It sat 5,500 people. Now, today, there are bigger churches than that. But in that day, that was like a UFO mothership. There was wow. nothing like it anywhere in the world. And she built it for cash during the Depression, had people buy individual bricks because she said it needs to be done. And when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, You'll be turned into another person and let it be that when these signs come, you will do as the occasion demands. Billy Graham said, we need stadiums filled with people. We can't get the job done mm -hmm. on this mealy mouth, a little here, a little there. He said, we've got to fill the stadiums. And he did. Oral Roberts said, we've got to put miracles on television. We've got to put miracles on television. 
Now, what in the world is the potential of everyone watching right now? Come on. What is their potential? If they will not let the religious hypocrites, don't let the church take your edge. Come don't on. let the dumb Christian ruin your fire. Don't get around people with unbelief. Don't look at the headline. Don't look at anything. Look at this. That if if you are a miracle, I want to tell you, I was in a church with the loudest shout that I ever heard. But before I tell this story, I got to let you say something, brother. Yeah, I no, I, I agree. <laughs> Mario, you are firing me up. I'm just, I'm just, I can't even, I want to just shout the whole time, but I know I'm going to make everyone mad because I'll be shouting over you. But I'm just so fired up by what you're saying because I really believe that this is the time. You know, we have so many people that have been sitting on the sidelines for so many years. I have people writing in saying for 40 years, I've been sitting in a dead church, never engaging in miracles, never engaging in spiritual warfare, never getting on the front lines but living on the sidelines and I, what I've, I feel like is happening is pastors are leaving people on the sidelines leaving people in that place of comfort that place of apathy when God has called every one of you and I want to say this we're at over 2,000 people tonight every single one of you have been called as Mara would say not to live on the cruise ship but to live on the battleship, not to live your life being served a cappuccino, being served some watered down gospel. Paul said in Corinthians that there's another gospel, another spirit, another Jesus. And this is something I've been preaching for a couple of weeks is, and he said, you guys happily put up with it. And one thing I'm seeing, and I, tonight is just so prophetic. I'm just, I just feel the fire. But one thing I'm seeing Mario is for years, people have been happily putting up with what Paul calls another gospel. This gospel, just come on Sunday morning, Right. Just drop off your tithe. Give us your 1% of your week. Give us your hour and a half. You know, sing our three fast songs, our two slow songs. Worship the worship. Worship the worship team. Give your little bit of money. Have your 25 minute watered down message. No knockout blows. No confronting darkness. No deliverance. No miracles. Five minute altar call and let's all go home and live our, the rest of our, our week like the people that are living in darkness. And we do that week after week after week. And then 40 years goes by, but we've never actually enlisted or fought in the army of God. Now, am I arguing that you'll be saved? Well, Paul says you'll be barely saved. I'm not trying to be barely saved, but what God is doing is people that are right now listening in the chat that have been, re we've been reaching through these broadcasts are no longer happily putting up with this. They're no longer putting up with this watered down gospel. I have pastors of mega churches writing me saying nobody will watch our broadcast. And here's why. When they, you were meeting on Sunday morning, they were coming because they were obligated because of religion. Religion obligates you to go. You just check it off your box. Well, now that you're not meeting on Sunday morning, their true colors are showing. And the truth, the truth was nobody wanted to go to church. Nobody wanted to hear the preaching because there was no power. And so it's not that the church is dead. It's not that people don't want to go to church. It's not that the church is shrinking. The church is actually growing because God is reaching highways and byways like never before. The army is rising up. But what I have seen shrink is the fake prostitute harlot of Babylon that tries to be the bride of Christ that has gotten plastic surgery that has gotten enhancers that has put on makeup that's why God says wipe off the makeup wipe off this exterior this fakeness and God is releasing breakthrough right now I'm telling you guys this is the greatest moment to get saved. I was telling them, Mario, I, I haven't shared this with you, but there was a girl on YouTube who had a tarot card reading channel. So her YouTube channel, she reads tarot cards and she does fortune telling and does the crystal balls. Well, she found me through the YouTube because YouTube's just growing like crazy right now. She randomly found our video, started watching all of our spiritual warfare, our casting out demons videos, our breaking curses videos, and started realizing everything she was doing was demonic. Gives her life back to the Lord because of course, all these witches and warlocks, they were raised in church. All these people that are on drugs are raised in church. All these gang members, were raised in church well the preaching brought her back and i'm saying this all because i believe tonight that this preaching is bringing somebody back i believe there's some prodigals that stumbled onto this broadcast that god is bringing you back tonight but she said that all of a sudden she encountered the holy spirit felt the power of god and she wrote me this message on instagram and said isaiah i'm taking down all my tarot card reading videos and i'm replacing them with prayer videos and i just thought mario <laughs> what a black eye to the devil the devil i mean oh. we've been you know mario we've been every week making the devil lose a Super Bowl. He's been losing the Super Bowl three times a week since January. We're just giving him double black eye every broadcast. But I'm telling you guys, the devil is losing. It feels to many of you, because you go to a dead church, that it feels like God is losing, that we're losing territory. But what God has been speaking to me, Mario, and I'll pass it over to you here, but God has been saying, I'm advancing my kingdom. The church is taking territory. We just launched this deliverance network where people all over the country and the world are signing up to be on our map to do deliverance and pray for people and do baptism in the Holy Spirit. And now our map, in five days, we launched it five days ago, 
We have people now all over the country, over 100 already in three, four days, and hundreds more waiting to be on the map to just destroy the gates of hell. We're not talking about churches signing up, and there are that have signed up. We're talking about believers that are armed and dangerous, that give the devil a fever and diarrhea every morning to get out of bed. The Acts 19, Peter I know, Paul, are you, Paul I know, but who are you? Christians that are known at the gates of hell, that are breaking down the gates of hell. And guys, you are a part of this army. God has anointed you, called you, called you out of religion, called you out of crusty, dusty, Pharisee, Sadducee religion, and tonight is raising you up with his miracle power, his miracle anointing. I'll pass it back to you, Mara, but it's just incredible what you're saying. I just completely bear witness because what God is doing is just so powerful right now. What we've got to do, Isaiah, is protect them from being infected mm. with, with uh, RTDs, and that's religiously transmitted diseases, RK, the RTD. And, and, and what I want you to understand is that you can't let the church's unbelief get in you. Mm. You can't let an, uh, a, someone who says, well, you know, in a five years, this fire is going to wear off and you, you just like the rest of us. You got to get away from that. You got to step away from that. There's even a Bible verse. In, in the book I wrote, Vessels of Fire and Glory, I talked about this separation. And it says, the, in a great house, they're not only vessels unto honor, but vessels unto dishonor. Mm -hmm. Those of you that have been freshly saved found out there are a lot of weirdos in the church. There are a lot of strange folks. You thought the people were weird out on the streets where you live. We, we had a corner on weirdness. And believe me, there is this moment where you realize if I want to keep the beautiful power, mm. fire, and glory that I have with Jesus, I'm going to have to separate myself from certain crowds. And here's, here's what it said. If a man, if a person separate themselves from these, meaning the lukewarm, they'll be a vessel unto honor, meet for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. Wow. You see, God's got you doing things that other people can't imagine. And here's the key. Do you want to empty wheelchairs? You want the, the mm. lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear? You want the miraculous? Then you've got to understand one truth, the message. Mm. The message. The message. What is it God once said? When I talk to young preachers, and I'll tell you what, there's so much fire here, I'm going to take a drink of water. <laughs> Come on. But, but what is the secret to miracles? The secret to miracles is preach what God once said. Wow. Micaiah in 1 Kings 22 said these words. He said, whatsoever the Lord says to me, that will I speak, and that only will I speak. Wow. You've got to decide that your sermon your sermon has got to be what God told you to say and not the traditions of men. You got to separate it out. And so what does God want to say? Well, we have some clues. He wants to win the loss. He is not nearly as hyped up of all these things the church is excited about. The church has to win the loss. Mm. And you know what? That's never an accident. You know, when I used to come over to the 209, I used to watch the prayer that you all put in, mm. you and Nino, that you would pray. And one thing I remember that I thought was so cute, I'm going to use the word cute. <laughs> I don't know how often anyone has ever uh, talked about your uncle and said the word cute. But this is what I, I noticed about him, is that he was very protective about who would ever preach yes. at the awakening. He, he, didn't, he didn't put up with any nonsense. Nope. He made it real clear. And I remember walking in there thinking to myself that all of the things that bothered him bothered me. Come on. All of the things that that were like, I can't handle this. And, and it was like we would compare notes. And it was such a relief to know that there was another one in the universe like this. Come on. But here's the, here's the part I want to get to. In Acts chapter 4, verse 29, it says, Lord, grant unto your servant that with all boldness they may preach your word. Oral Roberts had a word. T.L. Osborne had a word. John G. Lake had a word. Smith Wigglesworth had a word. 
These are all names that I know many of you will get to know as you study the supernatural signs and wonders. But the message, the fidelity, and the truthful loyalty to what God once said is what unleashes the miracle. Look at what, how the Living Bible quotes Acts 14, verse 3. It says, and God proved wow. that their message was from him by letting them do great miracles. Wow. If we're loyal to the message, if we're going to say, you know what, Isaiah, I only want to preach what God tells me to preach. And whenever you've been loyal to the word, that's when the miracles break out mm. because you're giving God. Hello, I'm going to shout right now. Ooh, come on. You're giving God something to confirm. Wow. He doesn't want to confirm division. He doesn't want to confirm cheap grace. He doesn't want to confirm nonsense and catatonic new age hybrid Christian uh, mutations. He, he has a message. And when that message is faithfully preached, signs and wonders and miracles break out everywhere. So Glory to God. so good, Mario. I was thinking about John 10 today. I was reading John 10 where Jesus said, if you don't believe me, and I know there's a lot of people that say, Isaiah, I just got saved and no one believes me. I try to share my faith and I tell everybody and I'm like, join the club. Jesus said, if you don't believe me, John 10, he said, believe the signs and wonders and miracles that follow me and know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And as believers, Mario, and I know you're big on this, and we'll go into this here in a second, we have the burden of proof. It is our calling to prove and the miracle Miracles validate the gospel that we preach. You know, I believe, and I've said this before, the world is not looking for a new definition of God. They're looking for a new demonstration of God. This is something wow. that we are lacking in the body of Christ is we talk, we talk, we talk, we preach every week, but there's no demonstration. This is why we have our two minute altar calls. This is why the church doesn't come to prayer. There's no power. This is why there's no passion. People say, why do you shout that way? Why are you yelling like that? And I'm like, well, why are you quiet like that? You know, there's no passion right. in the church because passion comes from something happening you know everybody yells when their football team scores a goal they don't yell when nothing's happening on, on the halftime show and a lot of people are wondering why there no, there's no passion in their church well it's because nothing's going on in their church nothing's happening and there's nothing to be excited about if there's no miracles breaking out but I believe it's time now that we break out of this talk, 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 and we begin to demonstrate. First Corinthians 4 20 one of my favorite verses for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk but living by God's power. Every single one of you, according to Mark 16, if you believe miracles are going to follow, you have the power. You don't need to wait. Well, brother, I need to wait for a miracle gift and a gift of faith and a gift of healing. Those are gifts, but those are special, abnormal manifestations of the Holy Spirit in special circumstances. Every believer has been anointed and called. If you're listening to me, you have been anointed to lay hands and to prove the gospel we're preaching. Acts 1.8 does not say you're going to receive an argument when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Friend, you're not going to see healing break out in a comment section arguing on Facebook. Amen. It is only going to break Amen. out when the Spirit of God, the power of Amen. God comes upon you. And that's what we're preaching. That's what we're saying. And when this happens, people can argue. They can talk all you want. They can say this or that. But this is the normal Christian life. Nobody can argue a blind eye open. No one can argue a deaf ear open. Nobody's debating scripture. I think about those early days when we were in the house, Mario, and I had all my drinking friends coming, all my partying friends, all my drug friends coming. And they made fun of me. They you know, they heard that I encountered God and they would come and they would make fun. They would curse and they would sit in the corner and they would scoff at me. I'll never forget one night. I had three or four of my best friends in the world that I used to party with. They all came to laugh at me. And Mario, I got done preaching and a man came into the room, said, hey, there's a guy outside in a wheelchair. He's trying to get up the stairs to get into your house. And I thought, oh man, this is like the showdown on Mount Carmel because here we have a guy in a wheelchair about to come in. And then all my old party friends are in the corner laughing at me, snickering at me, making fun of me. And here it is. And so I said, well, we're going to go grab, grab him and bring him in. So we had some of our team carry this young man in who hadn't walked for years, was in a wheelchair. And I'll never forget one of my other friends who just got saved a week prior came out of drinking partying everything stood over that young man in the wheelchair didn't know how to pray we didn't know what we were doing mario we my didn't know God. we just knew nino told us the bible says you can lay hands on the sick and we can lay hands on the sick and i'll never forget he looked at that young man in the wheelchair i had my other friends in the corner you know snarling at us making fun of us and he began to say pick up your mat and walk well mind you the guy was in a wheelchair obviously he didn't have a mat but we just didn't know what to pray we were just praying these prayers because we got radically saved we used to drink yeah. every day and now we were praying every day and that young man i'll never forget 
popped out of that wheelchair like an Eggo waffle out of a toaster and began to walk through the crowd. And I remember all three of my friends that were making fun, that were mocking, that were saying, your God isn't real. And this is after I preached to them, Mario. This is after the veins popped out, <laughs> after I you know, preached for an hour and a half with no one could understand what I was saying. And they all three were crying. All three of them were all, got on their knees. What do you, pre whatever you're preaching, we want. Whatever it is, we want. Because there was a demonstration of the power of God. Preaching the gospel without demonstration is the best way to create religion, is the best way to create dusty, crusty, dead, lukewarm religious people. But if you don't have the demonstration, you're just going to have an argument. And the world is not interested in our watered down argument, our lack of knowing the word of God and lack of power. I believe it's time for demonstration. And I wanted to touch on, this is one thing you've been running with. Your crusades are living proof. We're living yeah. out. We are the proof of the gospel. We are the proof of the power of God. And so I'd love if you'd even just share some of that, what you're doing in the tent, some of the miracles that you've been seeing now, because there's a lot of people that believe that are watching right now that think that God is not moving in California or America. I believe one of the greatest lies ever is California doesn't want revival. And I'm, I'm, I'm streaming straight from California, letting you know that there is a remnant. There are people that are hungry and there is great revival happening in the state of California. You know, not only is California hungry, Isaiah, but one of the things that you and I have both discovered is people want to get saved in California. Come on. And they, they will turn to God fiercely. You know, we set up the tent six nights in Fresno. And uh, we went in there. They told us, you can't do this. You got to social distance. You got to all this. I'm not going to get into a debate uh, with anyone online about, you know, being unsafe during the pandemic. But what I will tell you is the crowd showed up. Mm. We had 1,200 people in a tent that could only seat 800. Mm. And, the, and the first night, we were praying with 300 people to be born again. And the power of God is so strong that no one can deny it. And the miracles of healing that were breaking out. Uh, and, you know, people walk into that tent, and there's one outstanding feature, is the presence of God. Mm. The presence of God. It, it, it's now... And here on, on January 11th, we're setting the tent up in Bakersfield. In the old uh, Montgomery wards, it's called uh, City Serve. It's associated with Canyon Hills Church. And their property down on F Street is this huge property in the heart of everything in wow. Bakersfield. And we're putting up our tent for three nights, probably going to end up adding more, the 11th through the 13th. Well, here's the deal. Every one of us has something powerful to do mm. for God. This is what I believe is the worst spirit in the modern church, is the spectator spirit. Come on. I believe it, it was born in hell. It was born in hell, folks. The idea that you're going to sit every Sunday and listen to a sermon, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be getting armed and dangerous. The voice in the pulpit ought to be saying to you, look, I'm not going to let you stay powerless. I'm not going to let you stay without a calling. I'm not going to let you stay without fervor and fire and a, and a great inventiveness. Let me tell you another thing God does. God saves our brain. Come he doesn't on. just save our heart. He, our brain gets born again. And let me tell you what happens. You get ideas. You see, when this pandemic came, uh, you, Isaiah, were preaching in churches. You were in buildings. And then that stopped. Well, you know, it stopped be because of the attack of the devil. But what you're doing now would never have happened Come on. had the devil not shut that down. Come on. And see, you know, I, I am telling you that everything Satan does boomerangs. It boomerangs back on him. He never should have done this, never should have done that. And you know the attack that many of you have been through where the devil tried to discourage you? Come on. There, there's a point where you're going to say he never should have done that because every attack of the devil unlocks something new that you would never have known otherwise. And let me tell you the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God, and you've seen this in your life. God doesn't want us to get good at something we're not supposed to be doing. Wow. And sometimes the devil will throw success at you in order to prevent you from the thing you're actually supposed to be doing. 
So you're going to be over here developing talent that is totally a distraction. And so God will allow upheaval. He will allow crisis. He will allow you to suddenly be up here and then suddenly demote it in order to protect you from false success. So that when you're promoted, look at it. There's no way that we could have had this audience tonight in the old nope. method. Nope. There's no way we could have been reaching. The, it's like it went exponential mm -hmm. because of God seizing crisis and using it for his glory. Amen. Amen. So good. You know, we have um, 2,600 people live right now on Facebook and YouTube. And you think we were meeting, you know, Mario, you'd come over and we'd have a couple hundred, you know, maybe a special event. We'd have four or 500 people. But now and then later, we're going to get off this broadcast and... 300 to 400,000 people will see this video in the next week or two and be touched by the power of God. And the thing is, guys, our God is timeless. Our God is everywhere. God can heal you right where you're at. Mario, I know some of you know this, some of you might not, has, in my opinion, the most accurate and sharp word of knowledge gift I have ever seen in my life. We've had him come out time and time and time again, and he'll go for hours calling people out of the crowd. And this is one thing that's happening at the Crusades, at the tent revivals, is there's a demonstration. You know, Mario, one thing I've seen you do in our own service with family members, friends of mine, and I always talk to you after and I text you, I'm like, you wouldn't believe this, you wouldn't believe this because it's so unbelievable the people you call out and the conditions that they've had. I've watched Mario in my own family. I've had family come to me, tell me all these ailments, nobody knew. And then I've watched Mario that night come and call them out and tell them everything that no one knew that he could have never known in my own family and my own friends and watch God heal them. Here's what I've seen though. Oftentimes, Mario will do the word of knowledge and begin to pray for the sick, and miracles will break out before the message. And guys, I'm telling you, when the miracles break out, nobody has to convince anybody that Jesus is real. We don't have to spend an hour and a half getting into exegesis and hermeneutics and theology and the, you know, the coming of the Lord, the eschatology, and was he in the flesh, was he not? Was it Trinity, was it not? Because when the miracles break out, it validates the move of God. I would love, Mar, if you would touch on maybe just some of these miracles or maybe even some of the stuff you saw when you were in Berkeley and I also would love you if you touch on the word of knowledge because everybody always asks this about you. They always ask, what is this word of knowledge? How do you hear God when you're giving these specific things? I know the first few times you came, I always thought, how, how does he hear it? Does he see it? Does he hear it? Because you have some of the sharpest, in my opinion, I've ever seen, you know, of word of knowledge that God has given you this gift of demonstration, word of knowledge and healing. And you know, we always teach God oftentimes gives you a word of knowledge to bring the healing. It brings that faith for the miracle and the healing. There's a reason why he gives you the word of knowledge. But if you just touch on some of that, I would love for you to share on that. You know, what I want to do is tell you that the Bible tells us that our mind can be subject to the spirit of God. Mm. And when your mind is subject to the spirit of God, and, and this is the issue. Not only does your mind need to be submissive to the Spirit of God, it also has to be submissive to your heart. And this is where people blow it with miracles, uh, Isaiah. They, they're trying to get thoughts in their mind instead of convictions in their mm. heart. When I look out in an audience, I don't get a new age impression. Mm. I don't start talking like there's somebody in the room there's something in the room uh, to me that 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 denigrates the the power of christ because jesus has got to be glorified so what do we do i look at someone and my heart goes out to them i say wow not my thoughts my heart suddenly i'm broken hearted about them and i'll go lord wh why do i feel this sorrow about them. I remember we were in uh, that in in the building at the two. And I looked over to my right, and I think you'll remember it was a blonde lady. Uh, and that doesn't narrow it down very well. But right over to my right, this lady's life broke my heart. Mm. It was all I could do to keep preaching. And I said, Lord, this is, this is overwhelming. And it turned out that there was a murder in her mm. family. It turned out that sleep had left her. It turned out that her abdomen was a torture chamber. 
and her spine was hellish. And I walked over, not knowing these things yet. But as I got close to her, the heartfelt compassion wow. began to be revealed as thoughts. And then I said, this is what's happened in your family. And I remember her healing because even before she had time to react, there were three people around her that fell on her. Out of jubilation, they fell on her <laughs> and began to sob as a, as a group. And then she was the last one to, to start weeping. So she looked up at me and that lightning flash of recognition. See, the Bible says Christ was moved by compassion. Wow. That's why uh, I, I, I see so much arrogance in the ministry, and I, I know you do too. Mm. We travel around, and, and uh, I, I used to have a saying that, that men of God used to be prophets with agents of, and agents of change. And now they're performers who have agents. Wow. Wow. And you think about it. I, I just want God, his heart to possess me, his passion to overwhelm me. I want to feel what he feels about the human race around me. I don't want to see people as Republican or Democrat, conservative or liberal. I want to see them as a soul that Christ died for. Mm. And that, that, that is it. You know, I want to tell you a little bit about my wife. You and I, we did, we did something right. We married the right woman. Come on. That's what we did. So. Come on. You, you married the right woman. I've met your wife. She's a real woman of God. Yes. Well, I did the same thing. And I'm so proud of my wife. And uh, sometime the best Thing that people remember about the tent crusade in the healings of the salvations and they do remember the things but they'll talk about when my wife gets up to lead in prayer at the beginning because she'll shift the atmosphere mm. it's a powerful thing this tiny little body and then all of a sudden <laughs> this prayer comes out of her but you know the thing is her compassion her compassion for people is is so amazing and sometimes it's the most convicting thing to me because I'm married to this woman who keeps me right in the sense of always having the right priority. We're not in this for the money. We're not in this for the fame. We're not in this to be known. We're in this because we have a desperate cry for people to be saved and healed. Now, the gifts of the Spirit, and if I can say this, uh, one more thing is that, uh, let me say one more thing. Okay, bro. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting some, um, internet drop guys. Everyone please bear with us. If it doesn't load, I'm, I'm working on fixing it. Just jump out and come right back in. I know a lot of you are getting reconnected now. Don't worry guys. We're getting it fixed right now. We're just, we're reconnecting now. So just jump right back in. It's, it's going good. Go for it, Mar. I didn't want you to say it See? right before this happened, but we're back on no, now. No. We're good. No, you're freaking me out with all this technology. Man. Come on. I'm, you're some kind of a <laughs> next level dude. I don't. You know, God used I my nerdiness for his kingdom. Huh? Absolutely. Now I know why Steve called you. Come on. We're <laughs> back on. We're clear now. So go for it. We're clear now. Everything's right, back well, on. You know, one day I met a very famous scientist. Mm. He, his name was Captain Yaki. And Captain Yaki did the science for the Tomahawk missile. Wow. And this, this was. And I asked him, well, how does that missile work? Because I've seen it fly, stop at a red light, and then turn left when it turned green. And he said, well, I can tell you what's in the Tomahawk missile, but then I'd have to kill you. Wow. And, and let me tell you something. This, this scientist for Raytheon Corporation who built the Tomahawk missile, he said, Mario, I'll never forget it. He said the most powerful thing about this missile is not the explosive power. He said, we've got all kinds of bombs. It's the aiming device. It's the aiming device. It's the aiming device. And I said, well, what is, what is that? He said, that's what makes it lethal. It knows how to find its target. And when you're the target, it just knows how to find you. And I thought, man, that, that's, and then one day I began reading 
Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, where it said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Let's talk about that just for mm. a second. The weapons of God are not a circus act. They're not induced by noise. It's not singing a six-worded phrase 800 times Come on. that unleashes the power of God. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they don't draw themselves. They don't give themselves credit for anything. And then it says, but they're mighty through God. Get this part, to the tearing down of stronghold. When a church decides to quit wasting the Holy Spirit on itself. Come on and points the gifts of the spirit come on at the nests of hell and the strongholds of darkness that's when the power is unleashed you know catherine kuhlman i don't know how many she was the greatest female healing evangelist of the 20th century mm. god used her in miracles like no one else we had ever seen and she would do a monthly rally at the shrine auditorium in los angeles I saw children with polio healed with my own wow. eyes. I saw miracles that were beyond words. And I wondered the secret of her power. She was overwhelmed with compassion for those who suffered. Wow. And one of the things that earmarked her life is that she refused to let the same people sit on the front row every crusade. Wow. She had cards. She wanted to make sure that the people who were dying, the people who were the sickest, were the ones seated on the front. Every other evangelist is intimidated. Imagine that. They want all of the worst cases yep. to be in the back where nobody can see them. She wanted them in the front. And what was her, her, her wisdom in that? Why did she do that? Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the tearing down of stronghold. She knew that the nine gifts of Spirit, like the tomahawk missile had an aiming device in them just like that young man that was in your house in a wheelchair at the moment that your ex-party buddies were there to see the power of god and what do the gifts of the spirit do tear down strongholds of satan and uh, you know i i got more on this i could go on but I, I just better let you talk, son. So good, Mario. I'm, I'm getting so fired up. I know there's many of you right now that are watching in the chat. And I think, Mario, what you said about the standard in the church right now has become so low. The standard, and the, we've changed the pattern. I've been preaching yes. the last few months on deliverance, and I'm saying, guys, everywhere Jesus went, the Bible says he healed the sick and he drove out demons. And if we're not doing these things, then we're saying that our pattern, our strategies, our models are more powerful more influential and more right than the pattern of jesus and really the standard for the church right now is so low people are so used to not experiencing the presence of god they're so used to not experience the power of god we enter now into prayer meetings into church services even in these live streams with zero expectation some of you walked in tonight with zero expectation because you've been to so many powerless meetings this is what the writer of hebrews said he said you've been believers for so long by now you ought to be teaching but but you still need people to come teach you the basic things of god yeah. this is what the writer of hebrews is saying the problem is you've been in so many powerless services you've been in so many powerless churches you've been in so many powerless live streams i'm seeing all these live streams and i was gonna say well i don't want to call anyone out but i could care less i'll call out whoever i want it's my live stream where the people are there just drooling in front of the camera speaking you know one word every 35 seconds no passion no excitement no fire no holy ghost no enthusiasm and i'm thinking does this guy even believe what he's preaching there's no move of the spirit and these this this standard we have now is so low in the body of christ and i really believe god is saying it's time to go back to the place where miracles are normal come on i'm prophesying over somebody where signs and wonders are normalized again where deliverance is normalized again where it's not abnormal to heal the sick it's not abnormal to drive out demons and i, I really believe right now pastors are afraid of of Jesus coming into their church and messing up their nice little structure we've removed the altars we've removed the miracles we've removed the signs we've removed the wonders I think about Mar the man at the tombs 
Everyone in the city is completely okay with this man being on drugs, with this man cutting himself, with this man being demon possessed, as long as he's out on the corner and not messing up our nice church, as long as he's out in the corner not messing up our nice gatherings, as long as he's out in the corner not messing out our nice strategies. The Bible says not only did Jesus cast the demons out of him, the man was butt naked, y'all, running around at the tombs, but the man now comes with clothes, is in his right mind, is normal, and everybody is now freaking out nobody cares that he's in on the corner on drugs messed up addicted now that he's healed delivered in the church everybody's freaked out when he comes back to the city and the bible says something mario to me the saddest one of the saddest verses i won't say the but one of the saddest verses of the bible it says and the people gathered and they begged jesus to leave their city now what was jesus doing that caused people to beg him to leave he was doing miracles and he was driving out demons and he was threatening this religious system and i'm telling you right now god is launching missiles to destroy the works of religion god is launching missiles people raising them up that i'm telling you are going to break the structure break this religion and going to confront i, I could just jump out of my chair right here are going to <laughs> confront the influences of darkness that have so held the church down these yeah. strongholds you're talking about have yeah. held the church down and god is launching people as missiles to destroy the influences the gates the strategies the plans god is causing confusion in the camp of the enemy god is lighting satan's kingdom on fire right now the devil's running around right now in the spirit has no clue what's going on running around all crazy and god is raising up this end time army that are bringing healing that are bringing deliverance i believe one of the things is god's going to heal many of you tonight so that you can heal others because once you get healed you have a compassion you know one of the reasons mario why i'm so compassionate on believers that are being demonized is because two days after getting full of the holy ghost I had demons trying to screech out at me while I was trying to pray, while I was trying to read. And now I'm compassionate because those have been forgiven yeah. of much, love much. Yes. And so no, I know what it feels like to be addicted. I know what it feels like to be depressed. I know what it feels like to have anxiety. I know what it feels like to be an atheist. So that's why I have such a heart to see these atheists see get saved and get delivered and get full of the Holy Ghost and get breakthrough. And many of you, God is going to heal you tonight. God is going to deliver you tonight. This is not just word, name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. This is a word of God I'm preaching here. And God is going to deliver you so that you can go and do deliverance, bring healing, lay hands on the sick, preach the gospel without needing any permission. Here's your permission. Acts 4.13. They were unskilled and uneducated, yet the Pharisees marveled because these men had been with Jesus. You've been called. You've been anointed to go for it. I'll let you go. I know, Mario, you're going to say something here. Oh, no. I think you're about to call out some. Come on. Yeah, I feel the power of God on you, brother. Come on. I You're believe, you know, guys, we're just going to get into it. We're going to begin to pray. I know we've been live for almost an hour and a half here, but we're going to begin to pray. We're going to begin to release. I've been hearing all day, Mario, that cancers are going to fall off people. Cancers yeah. are going to shrivel up. I believe tonight yeah. that there's been an assignment of cancer on you. That you've been, you've been doctor's report after doctor's report after doctor's report. Let me give you a report that by his stripes, you are made healed. And I really believe tonight God wants to go after. If you have family that have cancer i want you to stand in the gap for them tonight because i believe that god is releasing his healing power his healing waves you know there's one place in scripture where jesus was in a house preaching which we've just done for an hour after he gets done preaching or should i say as he's preaching the bible says something so significant i know you know this verse tomorrow it says and there was the healing power was present there was a power present to heal there was something about that meeting where there was healing power now there wasn't an hour and a half, which, listen, guys, I'm not against praise and worship music. What I am against is two hours of praise and worship, five minutes of preaching and no altar calls. And that's really what we have right now in the church. After that, Jesus got done preaching. He's preaching the word. Miracles begin to break out. They lower this lame man and the man gets healed. I believe tonight there is a healing atmosphere. There is a yeah. healing power. We're not on here because we're bored. Mario has been going at it all day long. He's been busy all day long. I'm sure he woke up at probably five or six in the morning, probably already posted three words on his blog, already been going at it all day long, writing and doing his thing. So we're, he's not on here. I'm not on here because we're bored and we're like, well, we have nothing better to do. We are on here because the Holy Spirit and the power of almighty God wants to touch you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet wants to begin to bring healing over the areas of your body you've been struggling with sickness you've been struggling with disease you might be right now in the hospital you know Mara I've getting tons of people writing me saying that they're in the hospital in quarantine in in with COVID watching our broadcast in the hospital well guess what friend if God can heal you from cancer 
God can heal you from COVID tonight. There is a healing wave of revival that God is releasing. I don't care that we're in the middle of a global pandemic. We're in the middle of a global healing revival happening through the internet, through live streams. And so I really just believe right now God is releasing healing and breakthrough over so many of you watching. Amen. You know, I want to tell you a letter that I got today. Mm. Isaiah, this letter is unbelievable. It came from a pastor. Wow. And the opening sentence was, whatever Bible you sent this lady, you have to send me. Well, once a year to so our, our partners, we send them a Bible. We buy a nice, beautiful Bible and we send it to them. Well, this lady got the Bible, came down with COVID, was in the hospital and told she wasn't going to come out alive. She's 90 years old. Wow. And she had the Bible that we mailed her, and she was reading it. And she got a notion that God was going to heal her, and she wouldn't accept anything less. So she's 90 years old, prime candidate in, in the COVID scheme of dying from it. And she rebuked it. She stood on the Word of God. She absolutely refused to accept death. And the pastor wrote this. She got up out of her bed, completely healed, walked out of the hospital, has no symptoms at all. And he said, I don't know which Bible that was, but you got to send it to me because that is the most radical thing. That just happened today, that letter. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there's a lady with migraine headaches who's watching me. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm going to tell you for a fact, you're going to know who you are because you're wearing a red article of clothing right now. And God's power is on your jaw and on the side of your head where this migraine comes very painfully. And I, I don't even know if you're a Christian. I think I'm scaring you right now. And um, I don't ever get names. I, I've always even criticize people that have gotten names. But I'm going to tell you, Sally, you've got mm. something red on. You have migraine headaches. You're being healed by the power of God, and you're going to scare people with your miracle. That's first one. This thing is spreading across the Internet. You, you, know, you, you mentioned cancer. There's a man specifically with stomach cancer. Mm. It's terrifying you. I mean, you're uh, you you've already dealing with anxiety over the loss of your job, and being locked in in this pandemic, and now you found out about this in, in your abdomen. Well, at first I rebuke the fear, and now I rebuke the cancer. And it's, it's, it's still small, but they found it. God's going to burn it out of your body. There's a mom that is receiving a healing mm. from uh, caring for a special needs child. Come on. And it's your spine from holding this child. This child uh, moves violently, and you actually injured your spine. And the Lord is healing you, and there's a miracle happening in that child. I'm telling you, Isaiah, I don't know why. Because right now, I'm feeling the power of God like I, I think mm. I felt three or four times in my entire life. And, and blindness, grinding of the teeth, suffocating illness, um, you feel like there's a steel wire cage, cystic fibrosis. Um, you're being healed in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you a quick testimony of something yeah. that happened. It happened in Los Banos, just to build faith. There's a guy that he, his wife comes home from the, hospital, from the doctor's appointment, and she got devastating news. You have multiple sclerosis. She suspected something was really wrong with her, her husband. And uh, <clears throat> she comes home from the doctor's office. And she's devastated. And her husband goes on to look up multiple sclerosis. 
they lived in uh, near Turlock. Mm. And so she's, he's typing in multiple sclerosis to understand what to do for, to help his wife. And this ad pops up. Mario Murillo crusade in Los Banos. Now, listen, we never put that ad there. We don't wow. know to this day wow. how that ad got there. Who bought it what? So it was that moment they decided they're going to go to the meeting. Well, this church was packed. People couldn't get in and they're standing against the wall. And they arrived at the start time, not realizing that it was, all, it was already packed. Well, they walk in the back. Listen, imagine this, Isaiah. The man and his wife are like from a historical church, Presbyterian or something. They walk into this church in Los Panos. As I am saying, there's a woman in the back that has multiple sclerosis. That's the first thing they hear. Wow. Wow. It, it, it so overwhelmed them. And they embraced. This is why what you're preaching about the bar being set so low. People need to understand who are watching right now. That church has taught us not to believe in miracles. Wow. Conditioned us to fight them. So here she is standing there with none of that and just says, I take the word of the Lord from this man to myself. And she was healed. Mm. And they go home and they go to the doctor. And I get this beautiful letter. I'll never forget it. I wrote, you know, and they tell the story. She said she has no multiple sclerosis. But Father, in the name of yes. Jesus, let cancer vanish. Mm. Let bone disease vanish. Let the COVID virus and symptoms vanish. Why? Because by your stripes, we were healed. Not by our word, not by our power, not by our name, but for your honor and glory. Do these great miracles all across the internet in the name of Jesus. Just do what the Lord tells you, Isaiah. Just yes. do it. Right yeah, now. so what I want you guys to do as we're praying this, put your hand wherever on your, I know I'm trying to read the comments, but there's, I think we've had over 15,000 come through as we've been live. So we can't get through. They're just coming in too quick, guys, for us to identify people. But what I want you to do is I want you to put your hand over whatever body part you have. If you have family in the room and they need healing or someone needs healing, be that vessel, be that conduit, be that place, yep. that portal that the Holy Spirit can move through. Lay your hand. If you're watching, I know a lot of you are in the living room watching, put your hand on somebody that needs healing in that room and we're going to keep praying this and we really believe that God is releasing his healing power right now that there's going to be hundreds of testimonies of the healing power of God being released right now father we ask you that you would just release your power that you would release your healing anointing lord that we are not beggars we are believers that you have paid a high price so that we could be made well in body so we speak to your body now we command your body to come in alignment with God's word we ask father the same way the apostles stretched out their hand and the Bible says miracle power was released. Father, we stretch out our hand through the broadcast and we ask that the yes. miracle power of God yes. would be released in every living room, would be released in every car, would be released in every home, in every bedroom. We pray the miracle power of God. Now, Jesus also calls deliverance a miracle. He said, anyone that does miracles, which was deliverance in my name, will never speak bad about me. So not only is God wanting to bring healing over yes. your body, but he's bringing yes. deliverance yes. from anxiety, from depression, from fear I believe right now and I've been seeing this all day Mario the spirit of suicide is being broken in Jesus name they're saying that the suicide rate is at an all-time high because of the lockdowns I come against now every demonic spirit of suicide you are bound in Jesus name we plead the blood over every demonic strategy Amen. over every demonic assignment Amen. we bind every demonic power and spirit we cast you out in Jesus name and we speak mass deliverance over you now we speak mass breakthrough every spell every hex every curse listen guys I prophesied two weeks ago and this was before that lady from the tarot card channel wrote me that there was gonna be a harvest of witches and warlocks that they're gonna be 
begin to get saved. And I said this on my broadcast, guys, that these witches and warlocks were going to get saved and they were going to be the most radical believers that you've ever seen. They're going to be the most radical on fire believers you've ever seen. And right now, there's witches and warlocks watching. Of course there are. There's almost 3,000 people. Of course there's witches and warlocks on YouTube and following us watching. But I hear the Lord saying he's calling you tonight. Yes. That there is a greater power. And I believe there's yes. somebody right now, I believe it's a witch, which is a, fee, a warlock is a male witch, if you guys don't know. But I believe there's a witch watching right now that you've, you've been having terrible fibromyalgia you've been having unexplainable pain i feel like the lord is saying throughout your body and you've been given over to witchcraft you've been get over to tarot cards and you've been Same. reading palms and you've been having sickness yes. ever since you got into the occult you've been having the sickness and i hear the lord saying if you will turn your life over me tonight i will release healing over your body that you don't have to live in pain any longer it's all attached and you've been wondering where is this sickness coming from and the lord is saying to you tonight it's attached to the witchcraft. It's attached to the magic. But God is right now bringing you, calling you, calling you out in this broadcast and bringing his healing power. And that's not just for one of you, but I believe every witch, every warlock, everyone practicing in the occult that is watching tonight. I know there's many of you watching. God is saying he loves you. He cares about you. And I just yeah. feel the Holy Ghost on this, Mario. God says there's room in the army for you. There's room in the army yeah. for you that God wants to use yeah. your testimony to bring others out of witchcraft. I had a guy write me yesterday that said he's coming out of the occult from our broadcast and God wants, to, I, I told him God wanted to use him in now to go back out of darkness into light transferred over to bring those in darkness out because he knows the way the enemy works. And so right now I call you out of witchcraft. I call you out of sorcery. I break the power of divination. All Every witch, every warlock, every a satanic high priest watching, God is arresting you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. God is calling you and God is bringing pain off your body. God is bringing sickness off your body the power of sickness is being broken over you now fibromyalgia i also hear the lord saying blood diseases are being healed right now there's somebody in here you just found out you have a rare blood disease and i hear the lord saying i believe you're male in your 50s but i hear the lord saying he's breaking yes. blood disease and guys when we say these words of knowledge it's not just for one person if it is for that person but it's also for others stir up faith and say hey i also have a blood disease and god could heal you as well the bible says this what he does for one he'll do for another so i believe believe tonight you know you're in your 50s you're male that there's a blood disease God says right now he's purifying he's healing he's restoring you're gonna go back to that doctors for that blood sample and there will be no more disease in Jesus name one last thing I want to say I felt Mario and then I'll turn it back over to you but I feel like a lot of people are getting healed in their digestive tract. I got three yes. messages in the last week of people that are having digestive problems, like intense constipation. They can't digest the food. They can't eat certain foods. And I, I just see the Lord. I was in prayer today about this. And I felt the Lord saying, I'm going to I'm gonna heal those with digestive tract problems. I'm going to restore intestines. I'm going to restore digestive tract. Where there's been damage, where there's been blockage, God says, I'm bringing healing power. So just put your hand over your stomach, over your abdomen, and let the healing healing power of God be released yeah, over well. you and let the Holy Spirit begin to bring healing over your digestive tract in Jesus name. Amen. Lord. Father God, I thank you for these miracles. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that they are being received, mm. that people are, are welcoming this change in their body by the power and the anointing and the healing virtue of Christ. Let it be, Lord. Let it be in the name of Jesus. You know, I believe there's going to be a lot of amazing. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Guys, what an incredible. I just want to tell you, Mario. So tonight, guys, if you don't know, we just actually broke our live viewer record. We peaked out tonight at 2,900 viewers. Our record before was two weeks ago. We had 2,600. And so we had 300 more tonight than we've ever had all live at once with YouTube and Facebook together. And so guys, God is reaching people. Don't be afraid. Don't believe all the media. Don't believe the hysteria, guys. Get in your word. Get in prayer. We're live every Monday, Tuesday, and then this week I'll be live again Thursday night coming at you with the word of the Lord I'll be in Arizona Friday and Saturday Mario before I get you off I know you've had a very long day you've been on here thank you so much you've been on with us for an hour and 10 minutes you've been pouring out is there anywhere else before I get you off here that they can find you that they can follow you any books that you wanted to talk about or just anywhere they can yeah. uh, get connected with your ministry well let me just say this these two books right here awesome. let me see if I'm doing this right looks good critical mass vessels of fire and glory these are thirty dollars normally you can get them both for 20 we call it the dynamic duo in fact um you can't get this on amazon but even though it is a bestseller on amazon 
I, this you can't get. I will autograph it for you. And it's free shipping. All they got to do is go to MarioMarillo.org awesome. and they'll get it. MarioMarillo.org. And guys, I have him linked also in the description. What I would ask you guys as our audience to do, I know hundreds of thousands are going to watch this and please, please, please do me this one big favor. I thank all of you donating, sewing. The bottom line is this, guys, and thank everyone that's starting to give even now. You've been giving through the broadcast. I'm going to sew into Mario regardless. He didn't ask for a dollar. He never mentioned any finances, but I'm going to because of the years he's poured into us. I'm going to send him a seed offering, a love offering. He's not, I know he's going to be like, I don't want all that. It doesn't matter. I'm going to send it either way. Sew into what God is doing. All the links are there. But here's what I want to ask you guys more than even giving finances tonight And I'm gonna get them off and then I'll go over the chat I'll read the donations and do all my after my show stuff I do but here's what Great. I want to ask Please follow him on his Facebook page because this is where you can find his blogs. You can find his article. You can find his website. You can find his merchandise, his books. So go ahead and follow him tonight. Thank you so much, Mario Murillo, for being here. We'd love to have you back on the show in the future. What an amazing yes, thing sir. God is doing. Thank you so much. I can't wait. I can't wait, my friend. Thank you. God bless you, Mario. All right, buddy. I'll, awesome. I'll Take care. See. All right. Take care. God bless you. What an awesome time tonight, guys. Wow, wow, wow. God is moving. God is doing a new thing. I don't know why this isn't working here, but it's okay. I'm telling you guys, be excited about what God is doing. I'm going to read the donations here. We're going to be live again, guys, on Thursday night at, at 6 o'clock Pacific. I know we still have almost 3,000 people watching. We're going to be live talking about open doors, demon gates, demon portals, whatever you want to call them. We're going to be discussing how the enemy gets into the life of the believer and how we can keep the enemy out, how we can put our guard up. So don't miss that. Guys, if you got healed tonight, if you got breakthrough tonight, please make sure you message me your testimony. Message this page. I know we get a lot of messages, but we're going to do our best to go through some of these testimonies. Please, please, please message me your testimony of your healing your breakthrough i'm seeing a lot of you on youtube and on facebook i have both chats up a lot of you are getting breakthrough a lot of you are getting healed so don't miss what god is doing guys i'm going to read through these donations if you want to sow if you want to give and that's kind of lame that my thing's not going on here my chat box let's see if i can get it i don't think we're going to get it here it's okay but if you want to give if you want to sow guys all the links are right there in the chat um, on the screen in the chat if you're on YouTube you can click the links that are pinned you can give through PayPal as I say guys don't dine and dash we're not going to take up a 30 minute offering if it's ten dollars fifteen twenty dollars whatever you can do praise the Lord but guys sow something into what God is doing I want to bless Mario so help me tonight by blessing the ministry and I'm going to go ahead and send him an offering and I'm going to sow into his ministry as I said guys he didn't ask for anything he didn't want anything but I believe it's only right that we sow into him he's been on a, a show today reached thousands of people on another broadcast came on our show poured out his heart preached to us shared with us so don't miss that i will be at fresh start church friday night and saturday night in arizona if you want to know where i'll be go to isaiasaldivar.com slash schedule okay so we won't be live on friday night i'm going to be preaching in arizona friday night so when are we going to be live when are we going to be live type it in the chat we're going to be live on thursday night this week only so this week only will be live thursday night and then we'll go back to our Monday, Tuesday, Friday. But just this week, type Thursday. We're going to be live on Thursday night, so you don't want to miss that. I'm going to read all the donations here in a minute, guys. If you want to sew, you can sew. There's links. You can also go to my website, isaiasaldivar.com slash partner. You can give one time or you can become a monthly partner. Guys, we're reaching six to eight million people right now every single month on social media for the honor and the glory of god this is good ground to sow into we're pouring out our heart we're going live three times a week we're giving you guys good 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 godly biblical content we're preaching things a lot of people are afraid to preach we're equipping the body of christ we have our deliverance network live so become a monthly partner with the ministry you'll get 70 messages from me and then 25 percent off the merch store all the partners calls and the future partners calls so don't miss out on that i'm going to start reading through the donations thank you everyone that's been here we hit 2850 i believe 2900 100 um, max with both our platforms so incredible guys we're about to break 3,000 total viewers on our live streams what an incredible thing God is doing I'm so excited all the honor all the praise goes to him we're not charging people to be in the live streams we're not charging for any of the content it's if you're able to sow then so and if you can't we completely understand I don't have Cash App. For whatever reason, we got blocked on Cash App. We can't make another account, but we do have Venmo. That's at Isaiah Saldivar. You can also give at IsaiahSaldivar.com slash partner. You can give through PayPal. The links are in the comments. You can also go to PayPal.me slash Isaiah Saldivar. You can also give by Zelle. 
Isaiah Luke Saldivar at yahoo.com. So everything's there for you guys to give. Everything's there for you guys to sow. As you guys can see on screen, a lot of donations are coming in. I love all of you from Facebook. I love all of you from YouTube. I'm so excited about the community merging it. What an awesome, awesome, awesome time. Um, if you still have testimonies, keep posting your testimonies. If you still need healing and you want to put your prayer request out, go ahead and type your prayer request out because there's many people in the chat. We also have moderators that are responding to comments that are praying for people. And so feel free to do that. I'm going to start reading these donations as you guys sow, and then we will jump off here because we're going to be live again Thursday night. I have a very busy week. We're getting all our stuff ready. I'm bringing my entire family to Arizona. So I'm going to have all four of my kids, my wife, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my mom, they're all going to be there. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss that. We're all going to be to Arizona. We're all caravanning over there. We're all flying over there. So we have a very busy week. We're traveling with four kids. I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a newborn. So be praying for us, y'all. I'm going to be preaching Friday night, Saturday night, and I will be there Sunday for the entire day as well. I'm not going to be preaching, but I'll be there in the services. I'll be receiving. I'll be hanging out there as well. So I'm excited. I know a lot of you are driving in. I had someone tell me they're driving in from Florida to be in Arizona. So people are flying in, driving in from all over the country. It's going to be a packed out service. So make sure you're there on time. It starts at seven on Friday. Don't miss that. It's all going to be on my website. So isaiahsaldivar.com slash schedule. You can find it all there. Okay, let's get through these donations, guys. And then we're going to get through the donations here. The Venmo will hang out for a little bit in the chat. And then we're going to shut everything down, get all the videos processed so everyone could go rewatch them. All the people that are just jumping on can rewatch them. And then um, I got a bunch of stuff I still got to get done tonight. Now, guys, thank you for all of you that stayed when the internet dropped out. There's nothing we can do when the internet goes out. It reconnected, thank God, and we, we were smooth again. We did lose a little bit of viewers there, but everyone came right back on and we are good to go. So that's exciting. Great, great, great. Tomorrow at noon, we'll be posting the stream reminder for Thursday. So if you jump on my page at noon, you'll see the flyer for Thursday. You'll see the thumbnail. You'll see the stream reminder. You can click stream reminder there and you'll be ready to go so that when we go live on Thursday night, you won't miss that. It's going to be awesome on Thursday night. Many of you have asked me to do this. And so God's been giving me some revelation on the way that the enemy is getting into the life of people. So be excited about that. Awesome. Someone said Jenny Weaver will be live on Friday night. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Feel free on Friday night, guys, to jump in Jenny Weaver's live stream. She'll be live on Friday night. So you'll get Monday night, Tuesday night. You're going to get the Thursday night. You'll get the Friday night. So don't miss that. It's going to be really, really good. And then we'll be back to our normal broadcast next week. And I, w I believe we're going to have Jenny next week, but I'm not locked in yet for sure. I'll talk to her and I'll let you know by Thursday who our guest will be. But everyone keeps asking to have her back on. And I think we're going to have her back on again on Tuesday. And then we have some other great guests. We're also bringing John Ramirez back on. I also am going to invite Alexander Pagani on, even though he doesn't need an invite once again on the broadcast and a couple new guests we have coming on. I'm so glad we got Mario Murillo on the podcast. I've been wanting to get him on for a long time. And I sent him a text saying, hey, would you come on this day? And he said, let's do it. So I'm excited about that. All right, here we go. Emmanuel Ruiz, who's always our first time giver. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Ruiz. We really appreciate you. Nathan G said, thank you for what you do. I go back to your old, uh, your videos from 2013. And they helped me stay on fire for the Lord. I've, I'd love to hear some more testimonies from where from you. They're powerful. God bless. Thank you, Nathan G. We love you and appreciate you. Thank you, Marcus Wendell. Appreciate you, bro. Love you. I always see you in the chat. It does mean a lot. Your support. Love you, Marcus. Thank you. Sade Edwards. I got guys tonight was amazing. I'm like, I'm on afterglow right now. I have a Holy Ghost high. Mario Murillo is amazing. I can't wait to have him back. I love Mario Murillo. He's just such a general and has the fire of God. Sade Edwards. Thank you so much. Karen Matthews. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that donation. Um, Maria Hute said blessings. Thank you. Sue Rhodes said blessings, my friends. Thank you so much. Sacramento said, thank you so much. Thank you. Shout out to you, Sacramento. We appreciate you. How can you give on your page? Uh, you can give by clicking the link in the comments. If you're not on my page, you're on Mario's page still. You can give on my website. You can give through Venmo or PayPal. All the links are on screen right uh, right here. They're right there. IsaiahSaldivar.com slash partner. Venmo is at IsaiahSaldivar. PayPal.me slash IsaiahSaldivar. They're all there. If I don't read your donation, I'm only reading out those that are giving on the link on PayPal and Venmo. So if you're giving the website, I can't see your thing until later. If you're giving on Zelle, I can't see your thing until later. So just know we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for everyone that's sewing and giving. As you know, I'm going to be sending Mario something as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Rhonda Stevens says, such an anointing on tonight's meeting. Thank you, Rhonda. I agree. Toya Stansell 
said keep leaving God keep leading people to deliverance you're a true example of a man of God thank you so much Toya anonymous said thank you anonymous thank you you're a legend thank you thank you thank you whoever you are another anonymous said praise God if you guys want to keep your giving anonymous you can just leave the uh, blank when you type out your name just leave a blank it'll be anonymous another anonymous said God bless you pastor thank you for your yes Don Castillo Castillo said thank you you're such a blessing to me and my family you have no idea Don we love you we appreciate you thank you thank you thank you so much we really do love you and appreciate you. I don't know. Oh, there it goes. I thought my chat froze. Unica Antonio, thank you so much. Rita, thank you so much. Nate Beacom, thank you so much. IG, thank you. Don B said, God bless. Thank you, Don B, for that big donation. Really appreciate you. Rebecca Mayrin, thank you. I know I'm butchering your guys' last names. It's okay. Pray for me. Okay. Gerald Gutierrez said, love you, bro. The power of God is working through me from your videos. Awesome, awesome. Any chance you'll make a self-deliverance video? Yes. Yes, 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 Gerald. I'm going to do a, a self-deliverance video very soon. I'm going to have prayers of self-deliverance. I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of self-deliverance. Is it effective? Does it work? Give testimony and do a self-deliverance video. Yes, that will be on my YouTube channel soon. Thank you for reminding me. I have it written down. Ed, thank you so much. Said God is moving so good. Ashley Terror said God bless this ministry. Thank you, Ashley. Jeremy Barmore, thank you so much. Anonymous said, thank you, bro, for everything you do. All glory to God. Thank you so much, Anonymous. The Victors said, thank you for your faithfulness, fire, and integrity. We honor, love you, Alyssa, and the girls. Victors, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. You guys are legends. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm also reading the YouTube comments here as well, and a lot of you are giving through YouTube, so I'm reading both of these. Awesome. Thank you, Christy Smith. I believe, Christy, you are from Hawaii, if I'm not mistaken, pastor of the House Church in Hawaii. Thank you, Christy and Tom Smith. We love you and appreciate you guys. Thank you for always being so supportive and being in the chat. And I hope I get a chance to get out there this next year. Melinda Torres, thank you so much. Elimelech, thank you so much. And your channel saving everybody out here. <laughs> thank you so much, Elimelech. We appreciate you. Jim, thank you, bro. You're a legend. Also, Jim, thank you for moderating on YouTube. Jim, Alexandria, Jasmine, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Candy, I'm going to make you a moderator right now. Boom. Candy Vallejo, you are now a moderator on YouTube. So... With great power comes great responsibility. Use it wisely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, they're helping me moderate YouTube, guys. We're getting in double the comments now because we're on both platforms. So now they're helping me. If people get out of control or get out of hand or start arguing or being toxic, they could go ahead and mute people there on YouTube and help me out. So that's been awesome. We've had a very, very awesome time um, and clean chat with them. So thank you. The OG3 crew said, God bless. Thank you so much, Michelle Drinis. Thank you so much. Constant Browning said tonight I stood I stood in the gap for my fiance awesome thank you Constance Browning for that offering that um for you sewing into the ministry thank you thank you thank you we love you and appreciate you thank you Sarah said God bless you keep on laboring God knows your works keep daring tearing down Satan's kingdom thank you for your submission to God and discipline it's the reason for people's freedom thank you so much Sarah Lashandra Streeter said you're awesome God bless thank you Lashandra you're awesome Elizabeth thank you Susanna thank you Esmeralda and Ellen thank you so much thank you thank you thank you appreciate you I see your prayer request there I won't read prayer requests out loud in case you guys don't want me to thank you so much about to go cross eye looking at those screens yeah Marcus Wendell for sure bro um, from now on right now I have two chats going forward from now on ever all the chat will be together like it was monday so all the chat will be together like monday so i'll be able to see everybody's i won't miss anything but tonight for technical reasons i had to break up the chats into two but like i said going forward even as we're chatting you'll see everybody's chat on screen i really do like the feature we can merge everybody i'll have all the total viewers on screen as well going forward so you guys can see the total number of people watching it'll be really really good for all you nerds that care about that it'll be good some of you are like i can care less but yeah John Kim, thank you so much. Richard Gutierrez, thank you so much. We love and appreciate you. Judith Gonzalez, thank you. Said, God bless you, Isaiah and Mara Merlo. Listening to uh, of Lifestyle of True Revival. Excited for God like never before. Your teach teachings have rekindled the fire. So grateful for you. Love you. Judith, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love hearing that. Thank you, Abraham, for spamming those links as well. And in YouTube, moderators, if you guys want to just put the links, um, copy and paste the links, the pinned comment, you guys can post those as well in the YouTube chat to help people that are trying to give. Art and Patrice, thank you so much. Lots of donations tonight, guys. Thank you. Johnny F said, you're truly a blessing. Thank you, Johnny. Ruthie said, thank you, Isaiah. So cheerful to be given to the work of the Lord. Thank you, Ruthie. Marissa Bell, thank you so much. Billy Johnson said, God bless you and your family. Safe travels. Thank you, Billy Johnson. Okay, I'm going to do the Venmo. Whew. <laughs> Let me take my first sip of water of the night, guys. We're almost two hours in. Okay, here we go. 
Let me just go ahead and read the Venmo, and then, like I said, guys, we're gonna we're gonna end this thing here, and we're going to thank you, anonymous. All of you are still giving. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to keep giving. I know some of you take time to fill out that screen, so I'll go ahead and give you guys some time here. But let me read the Venmo. Whew. Thank you so much. I know I'm out of breath here reading all you guys' names and pronouncing them most of them wrong, probably. Lots of Venmo tonight. Let me make sure I get everybody here on Venmo. Susanna um, Hoffy, uh, I believe it is. Thank you so much for that donation. Victoria Garcia said, Sowing in your ministry. Thank you for your obedience. Please continue to pray. And I got your prayer request. I'll continue to pray for that. Thank you so much. Tammy White said, Thank you for teaching deliverance. You're awesome. Thank you, Tammy White. Zanani Hernandez said, Keep going. God bless. Thank you so much. Martha Rivera said, Thank you for allowing God to use you in a powerful way. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Asia Rosaria said, Thanks for allowing God to use you. Nestor Palacio said, thank you, Isaiah and Mario. We love you guys. God bless you both. Thank you, Nestor and Anna. We love you and appreciate you. Kaylee Gibson, thank you so much. Yesenia Tirado. Guys, there's a lot of international people giving too, so don't judge me on the way I'm pronouncing names. Some of these names internationally are hard because I'm not used to hearing them or seeing them. Diana Picasso said, thank you for tonight's service. You've been a great blessing to my spiritual life. Thank you so much. Maria Rodriguez said, Mario Merlo. Thank you, Maria. Kayla Gonzalez. Thank you so much. Allison Batty, thank you. Daniel, oh, I don't, I'm going to pronounce that wrong, but I'm not going to say it. Thank you, Daniel. You know who you are. He said amazing word. Fernando Delgadillo, Delgadillo, I don't know. Anyways, so thank you for the powerful message. Thank you so much. Chelsea R, I see your prayer request, Chelsea. I'll definitely be praying for that. Thank you, Anonymous. Karis Ibarra said, so good. Thank you, Karis. You're always so faithful in giving. Angie Escobar, also always so faithful. Thank you so much. Said, thank you for tonight. God bless. And I got your prayer request, Angie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be praying for that. All of you that are sending prayer requests through your giving, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that I'm praying for those. I'll be going back over those and praying dedicated over those. So thank you so much. Angela Boone, thank you. Said, thank you for your ministry. Thank you, Angela. We love you. Let me switch over here so I can read some of your guys' chat here. Like I said, guys, if you want to look at the deliverance map, isaiahsaldivar.com slash deliverance. If you want to fill out an application, go to the website, fill out an application. We have lots of requests coming in. If we haven't gotten to you and you haven't received an email, whether you've been accepted or denied, please, please, please be patient with us. There's a lot of people to get through. There's a lot of people to read through. And we have to get your application and manually enter your information into our map, into our system. So bear with us. We will get to you. We will get to you. So don't stress out about it, okay? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, everyone that's been here. I'm excited for Thursday night. I'm excited for Friday night. And if you're wondering, well, Friday night and Saturday, I will be uploading Friday night and Saturday night messages from Fresh Start onto my YouTube channel. So don't miss those. They're going to be there. I believe Fresh Start will also be live for those services too. So don't miss out on that. It's going to be really, really good. Thank you, everyone that's been here tonight. Always a great time. Thank you, everyone that joined. We did break our streaming. Our, our, our highest stream now is 2,800. So awesome, awesome, awesome. The chat is everyone typing, all the comments I'm reading. That's the chat when you say, when I talk to the chat, that's what I'm referring to. A lot of you guys' donations are still going through. I think we have a couple more through uh, here I'll let go through so I don't cut you off. Let me just read some of these comments. Need healing from COVID-19? Yes, Joyce, we're going to keep praying for that as well. We'll be praying every broadcast. We pretty much pray for healing, deliverance, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Kenneth Murphy, hello, bro. Monique, hello. Let me make sure I have my YouTube up too. I don't want to neglect anybody here. Thank you, everyone that's coming from YouTube. You guys are amazing. I'm blown away. I expected like 100 viewers on YouTube, and we had over 1,000 viewers tonight on YouTube. So how crazy is this, guys? God is on the move. This is all supernatural. I can't take credit for anything that God is doing. Trust me, there's no way I could take credit for any of this. It's all God, and I'm excited about that. All I'm doing is being obedient to what God is telling me, and God is doing the rest. Awesome. You'll catch the replay. Thank you, everyone that's just jumping on. We've been live almost two hours. We're going to end here. This last couple donations are going through, and then we're going to end. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone that's giving and sewing. I'm reading YouTube Squad. Yes, Elimelech. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Yes, everyone that's typing prayer requests. Thank you, Abraham, for posting that on Facebook. Amen. I'll be praying for that, Billy, as well, for that healing over the cancer. Tiffany said, I received deliverance tonight, Isaiah. Thank you. Tiffany Gade, or Gad, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us. Awesome. I'm so glad you received deliverance. Thank you for being a part of the stream. Amen. Stephanie said, amen for all the healings tonight. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Lord. And like I said, guys, if you want to get into deliverance, but you don't want to lead or be on the map, find somebody on the map and text them or message them and say, hey, I don't want to lead the deliverance, but I'll help you because I know a lot of these people are getting a lot of requests in. Awesome. So that would be a great thing to do too if you want to be a part of that. I know many of you want to be a part 
but you don't want to be leading. So that's a way that you can do that too. Awesome. Save this. We're going to get off here, guys, in just a minute. Awesome. You said it right. Oh, I said it right. Awesome. Awesome. Hope to see you all at the rapture, meet you in heaven. Yeah, I'll definitely, if I don't meet you in person, guys, I'll be all meeting you in heaven, hopefully. Hopefully. And I'm excited to meet a lot of you in Arizona. We're going to have to figure out what we're going to do because, like I said, I'm going to have all my kids with me as well. So I'm guessing there'll be several hundred people wanting to meet after. So we'll figure out some type of strategy to do that because I do want to meet you guys. I do love meeting you guys, but also know that I have other obligations too while I'm at churches, while I'm in services. So we're going to do our best to get to everybody in these meetings and meet everybody and do the pictures and hang out and do all that stuff. How do you look up the map? IsaiahSaldivar.com slash deliverance and you'll find the map. Okay, guys, the last donation just went through. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being a part of the stream. I'll see all of you on Thursday night. You guys are legends. You guys are amazing. God is on the move. Be a part of what God is doing. Be excited about what God is doing. I'll see you guys on Thursday night. God bless. And if you're new here, it's a tradition that I talk on the end screen. So yeah, I will be talking for a minute here on the end screen. Love you guys. You can bring them all to Hawaii, Isaiah. I definitely want to go do some stuff in Hawaii. You don't have to ask me twice, Christy. We definitely got to work something out. That would be awesome. I know we do have a good amount of followers in Hawaii too. See you guys. Good night. I love you all. I genuinely, from me, my wife, and my family, will bring the girls on soon. I know a lot of you haven't seen the kids. We'll bring all the kids on very soon, but I love you all. I appreciate you all. Thank you to everyone in the chat. Thank you to all the moderators. Thank you to everyone that gave. Thank you to all my family that's so supportive. Thank you to everybody. We appreciate you guys. I feel like I'm giving a speech like I just won a Grammy. I just want to start off by saying, oh, thank, thank, thankful for God and my family. No, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. You're all family. I'm going to see a lot of you Friday night, and you know that you guys are family. I'm from California, Joyce. Amen. See you guys. Everyone just type good night in the chat. Good night, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and type it in both chats here. Don't want to leave anybody out. Good night. We love you guys. We'll see you guys Thursday night. Take care.